In this video, we'll use Excel to convert fractions to decimals with any number of digits. We'll also look at some very cool patterns involving repeating decimals, and we'll look at expansions in other bases. Now, to start off, I'm going to use the example of 1 7th, and I want to refer to this picture over here where I show the so-called so standard division algorithm for converting 1 7th into a decimal. Now, in the first step of this algorithm, I look at what I'm doing when I'm calculating. I'm looking at 10 divided by 7. And I get the 10 by multiplying the numerator by the base. If I had been doing 2 sevenths, I would first look at 20 divided by 7. And now I'm actually talking about fractions that are less than 1, so we're not going to deal with having, having places before the decimal place. Okay, so my first dividend then is equal to the numerator times the base. Okay, and that's a formula I'm actually only going to use in this first row, so I'm not going to worry about the absolute references yet. Okay, now my first quotient over here, that's the quotients are going to be up here, and in fact we're going to read the repeating decimal going straight down the yellow column. My first quotient comes from taking 10 divided by 7 and rounding down. Okay, so 10 in this case was the dividend. It's also the base, but that's kind of a coincidence here. And we were dividing by the denominator. That's what's out here. Okay, so in order to do that, then what we want to do is... Um, we want a function that rounds down. And, you know, my mom watched one of my earlier videos and she started telling me other Excel commands I could use. She actually teaches Excel. I teach, I use Excel to teach math. And there's kind of a big difference between that. But I appreciate some of these tricks. So let me, let me show you one she was telling me about that. There's this little FX button up here by the functions, and I can click on it. And let's say I'm not sure. I want to know all the ways I can round down. So in this little black box, it asks me to type a description. So I'm going to type round down is what I want to do. And then it gives me several different functions I can use. Okay, so you could explore this on your own. I'm going to use the int function. I actually know that one. And then I have these boxes up here and so I want um, I want the dividend so I want this cell divided by the denominator now I want the denominator to say the same so I actually want to use an absolute reference and the other trick that my mom told me is that if you hit F4 it toggles the various absolute references. So I want the one with both dollar signs because my denominator is always going to be 7 this entire problem. Alright, so that lets me put my formula in. Does that little cute animation going up there. Okay, so after I have my quotient up here, then I get my remainder by um, by subtracting over here, I know that I also have the mod function that will get the remainder, so I'm going to use that. It's the remainder of the dividend, and once again the denominator. I hit that F4 because I want the denominator to be absolute. Okay, and then the other thing I need to know is how do I get my next dividend? After I've gone through this, the n my next dividend is 30. And I got that by taking the remainder and multiplying by 10. And 10 was the base. Okay, if I was doing this in a different base, I'd multiply by something else. So I want to take the remainder, and I want that one to change as I drag, times the base, which I want to not change. And now I'm going to drag these two down. And then I will drag the whole thing down a whole bunch of places. I don't think I need 100, but... Okay, and there we have, now you can see the quotient. This is what we started here, the 0 0.142, 0 0.142857, 142857. 
and it starts repeating again when we get to a 1. So that makes sense. That's when we have 10 as our next dividend, and we're just doing the same thing over. Now, 1 seventh is kind of special because it uses all the possible remainders. I mean, when you're dividing by 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are your only possible remainders, and we go through all of them, which means if you're a little kid doing this problem by hand, it's a lot of work, more than, say, one third. Now, it also means that if we change the numerator, you see, we'll get, um, we'll get something that's just sort of a shift here. So, for example, if I change the numerator to 2, now my first divisor is going to be 20. But that's going to be the same thing that I had here in a different order. Before I had 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, and I've still got that. It just starts later. I'm starting with the 2. That was right over here. Same thing if I do any of them. If I do 5 sevenths, it starts with the 7, but it's the same digits, just shifting. I think that's kind of interesting. Let's try something different. Let's try 1 thirteenth. Now you see 1 thirteenth starts over again, right over here, and it doesn't go through all of the remainders. It goes through some of them. So if I tried something like 9 thirteenths, that would just be a shift. I get the same remainders. But if I try something like 2 thirteenths, I get completely different remainders and I get different quotients too. Mostly different quotients. And it's, but I can pick another one on this list, say uh, 5 thirteenths, and that'll be a shift of what I had before. Okay, another nice thing with this, let's try 1 17th. Because 1 seventh you could really just do on any any old calculator, but 1 seventeenth is too long. See, 1 seventeenth doesn't start re repeating till here, which is actually 16 digits because I have a heading over there. So 1 seventeenth goes through, goes through everything. So you can use this to check very long things if you want. Let's check a familiar fraction, 1 fourth. Now, 1 fourth doesn't repeat. This is a terminating decimal. And you can see a terminating decimal gets all these zeros. And as we know, 1 fourth is 0.25. Well, let's try 1 fourth in a different base. How about in base 3? Now, look at that. In base 3, 1 fourth is a repeating decimal. It's 0 0.02, 02, 02, 02. What if we try 1 third in base 3? Well, one third is just point 0.1 in base three. That's a terminating decimal. Just like, but if we go back to base ten, we have the familiar point three 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 three. So there's all kinds of interesting things going on, all kinds of patterns to explore in using repeating decimals with Excel. Now, actually, when we were in other bases, they're not called decimals anymore because decimal means ten. So we would really call those expansions.